This is an A-level biology video about sex linked genes. Specifically, we're going to be looking at how sickle cell anemia is inherited. So we're gonna start by looking at the symptoms and then how it's inherited. So the first thing to point out is that it is a recessive disease, which means it's only displayed in the phenotype when the dominant allele is absent. And that's going to be incredibly important later on, and I'll point out why that is. Sickle cell anemia means that rather than getting your normal biconcave red blood cells, so hopefully you remember they're quite donut in shape, and this is the normal situation when they have a large surface area to volume ratio, which means they can transport lots of oxygen. Unfortunately, in the case of sickle cell anemia, you find that the red blood cells are sickle shaped, which kind of means they're like crescent moons. And because of this, far less oxygen is transported. And that's due to a smaller surface area to volume ratio. So less oxygen transported. And you do find that there's quite a lot of internal bleeding. So the mortality rate for this disease is quite high. Because this video is all to do with how it's inherited, I now need to point out to you that sickle cell anemia is only carried on the X chromosome. But why is that so important? And that's because if you look at the sex chromosomes of a female, remember that she will have two X's and a man will have an X and a Y. So if we say that sickle cell anemia is only carried on the X chromosome, then it can only be carried on these chromosomes. It cannot be carried on the Y chromosome. So if we look at the combination of alleles which result in sickle cell anemia, let's have a look now. So here's one female and you're going to use the letter H to represent sickle cell anemia, and I'm using the lowercase h because it's a recessive disease, as I've already mentioned, and I'm going to use the uppercase h to show someone who is healthy. So if we have a look at the combination of alleles, this person here will be healthy, and remember they are homozygous because they have two copies of that uppercase h. This person will also be healthy and that's because sickle cell anemia is a recessive disease. We can also see that they are heterozygous because they have one upper case H and one lower case. The final combination for females is two lower case H's. This person unfortunately has sickle cell anemia because they have two copies of that recessive allele. And all the time we're very interested in what's going on here, here and here. If we now look at the potential male combinations of alleles, as we've already said, males contain the sex chromosomes XY. So what about if we were to do an uppercase H? I don't write anything here because remember, I've already said that only the X chromosomes carries the genes for anemia. So this person will be male and they will be healthy. The only other combination is this setup, which again is a male, but unfortunately they have sickle cell anemia. So the things I really want to point out to you at this point is remember that sickle cell anemia is carried by that X chromosome. You must remember that it is a recessive disease and that it's a disease of the blood which lowers the oxygen carrying capacities. Now we're ready to do some genetic crosses to work out the chances of a child having sickle cell anemia. So in cross one, we're gonna have a healthy male and carrier female, what is the probability of their child having sickle cell anemia? So the important thing is to work out what's going on with our genotype. First of all, we know we have a male, so they're going to be XY. We have a female, so they're going to be XX. The male is healthy, which means he must have an uppercase allele, because that would mean that, that he does not have the disease. Now the carrier female is also healthy, so she's going to have one uppercase H and one lowercase h. So we're now ready to lay out our answer properly. I always use the same method, so we're going to say male and female. Use this template always when answering these questions. So the phenotype, what is that physical appearance? So the male's healthy and the female's a carrier. The genotype now is the alleles contained by the organism, so we've already written that to make it easier for ourselves. We've got XY with that capital H there, XX, one large H, one small H. Next up, the gametes. Remember, those are the sex cells. So some of those sperm will have the XH. They'll be female. 
and they'll be healthy sperm and some will have that Y chromosome, which means that they'll be male sperm. The female, some of her eggs will be healthy and some will carry that gene for anemia. And if you don't like what I'm doing here, you must watch my other videos on Punnett squares because this is assuming that you're okay with GCSE level Punnett square theory. So we're ready to do our Punnett square now. Our male, we just copy down the gametes that we've worked out. So we have that X and that large H, the Y. The female, we have X, uppercase H, X, lowercase H. Now we're ready to cross those alleles. So you just rewrite them. And now you need to point out, and this is what people always forget to do, what these genotypes are showing. So let's look at this child here. What's going on there? Well, we have a female, so 25% will be female and they will be healthy and that's because they have that combination of big H, big H. If we look at this one now, another 25% will be female. They'll also be healthy but they'll be carriers of sickle cell anemia and we'll point out that genotype, it's because they have that combination of the big H, small h. Looking at this male, 25% will be male and they will be healthy and that's because they have that combination of big H and then that Y chromosome and then unfortunately for this male down here we have 25% will be male with sickle cell anemia and if we write that genotype you can see that it's small h y.